to be here to join you today thank you. and thank you for that lovely kind introduction um it always helps i think <laughs> for me not to have to say too much i'll tell you a little bit about myself in a moment but um yes first of all you know thank you so much madame Felicio, for the invitation it's uh it's a real pleasure to be able to come and join you this afternoon yeah, and welcome, uh, yeah. thank you I was listening to um, Mr. Olubenga, who, as ever, is so full of wisdom yes. and knowledge and has worked in this field for a long time. So I really encourage people to take on board what he has shared um, and even the bit that I caught, you know, there was so much good value there. So I'm looking forward to just sharing a few thoughts with you this afternoon for me. Um, on this theme that you are exploring today. Um, maybe just to give you a little bit of insight into myself, which I hope will give some context to what I'm about to say. So I was born in Ghana, and um, the first part of my life was spent moving around to various countries because of the work my father was doing. And then we eventually settled in the UK. So I live here in London. But that said, I think I was very fortunate that my parents were keen that I maintained a close link to my country. So we would visit Ghana regularly and I was made sure to speak our language um, at home. So I was able to grow up in what I now call this very dual cultural setting, which I'm sure is familiar to so many of you. And we become a bit of a cultural chameleon because when we go into schools and other public spaces, we sound like everybody else. And when we come back into our homes, we sound like the people we've grown up with or from the countries of our birth. And that agility is something which we should build because it's a very useful and very important skill. And as you move into the workplace and you move up in your careers, this is a skill set that I think will help you be able to adapt to so many different environments and situations. So for me growing up in the UK where I spent most of my um, adult life, I experienced, I think what again, many of you probably experience as you grow up in this space of being what is called an immigrant, unless of course you're white, then it's called an expat, but you know, for those of us that are called immigrants, we grow up with this dual culture. We know where we come from, hopefully, but we also have to operate where we are. And that calls for some skills, it calls for a mental mindset that is really, really critical for us to be able to succeed. So for myself, I went through the university route. When I graduated, I moved into a career in human resources management. And I worked for a number of different organizations and covered different sectors. And, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I graduated. And for many people that I work with today as an executive coach, they still don't know what they want to do when they grow up. So if this is something that's for you, then, you know, understand that it's normal. And most people don't know what they want to do. They fall into things and they adapt and they grow and they build on that. So I went into human resources management and I did this for many years. And then I decided to go back to Ghana. Um, and my husband and I then started a family and I worked in Ghana for a few years before we made the decision to return to the UK. But for me, coming back to the UK was not about leaving Africa as in abandoning the continent. And the question came for me, how do I continue to contribute back to the continent and my country of Ghana while I'm still resident here in the United Kingdom. And that led me to eventually decide to set up my own business to allow me the opportunity to find ways and programs that I could run, which would address that need to be able to contribute something back as a member of the African diaspora to the continent of my birth. 
And so I set up um, a company called Interims for Development. And the first project within that was really to identify people who would go and work in African countries for short periods of time. And they would go either as a volunteer or for a very basic fee and offer their experience that they had gained from the wider context of their experience back into their countries, either their own countries or other countries on the continent. And this was the start of a number of different programs. Um, along the way, we also established reconnectafrica.com. And I would encourage all of you to visit that website. It is a website specifically designed for professionals of African origin around the world. And on that website, we interview a lot of people, we share information about careers, about jobs, about personal development, to help you succeed wherever you are in the world as someone of African origin. And um, alongside that, my passion has always been to write. So I started to write, first of all, nonfiction books. And I'll share with you some of the learning from the first book that I published, which is called Everyday Heroes. And then I went on to write fiction. So as of now, I have written three full-length novels, two novellas, and my next novel will be published next year. So it's been a busy time. And I do this alongside maintaining some work as an executive coach, working with people, young people, older people, senior professionals, across all ages and sectors to help them, if you like, find their way forward to what they want to do with their lives and careers. So as hopefully that, that gives you the context of the world that I, I operate in today. Let's come back to what you're looking at and exploring in today's meeting. So, you know, the, the immigrant story is, is different for everyone, right? We all come with different backgrounds, different families, different contexts, different reasons why we are not in the countries of our birth. But I think there are some very common questions that we all face. And some of those questions I'll put out here. I mean, it might be a question like, you know, how do I maintain my dual cultures side by side when I'm living in an adopted culture? How do I justify moving away from my home country, from my family and my community? How will I give back to that community as I think about my life going forward? How do I fit in in this country that I now live in without losing that uniqueness of my own identity? How do I succeed in an environment where people may look at me and just by looking at me, see me less favorably than other people? because I don't look like the majority of people in this country. How will I and how can I ever really belong here? And these are questions that we don't always have immediate answers to, but they're questions that I'm sure will resonate for some of you, if not all of you. And the danger with these questions is because they don't all have very straightforward, clear-cut answers, they can impact our self-esteem they can impact how we see ourselves. They can impact our mental health. They can impact our ability to form relationships and to trust people. And so for our own sakes, really, part of our journey as young people, older people, professional people, we need to ask these questions and find these answers so that we can be whole people. And so what I would say to you, and I noticed that the theme talks about critical thinking is that one of the ways to answer these questions or these questions is going to depend on your mindset, it's going to depend on your attitude. There's an expression, whether you think you're right or whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're probably right. If you've decided you can, then you're right. If you've told yourself you can't, then you've already given yourself permission not to try. So you've got to decide, how am I going to think? How am I going to question the attitudes that I may be encountering instead of believing those attitudes to be true? 
And how am I going to find self-belief and confidence when so much around me is threatening that self-belief and confidence? And so your mindset is going to have to be strong. It's going to have to be positive to challenge the negative messages that may be coming at you just because of your difference. And the negative narratives that may be spoken about you, instead of leaning into them and starting to believe them, you've got to step back and critically analyze, well, is this true? And of course it isn't. But it's a mindset that you have to cultivate because otherwise you will start to fall prey to other people's assessment of you rather than your assessment of yourself. And that's when we start to lose who we are and our sense of what matters. So as we think about how do we get these positive messages, and you know, the previous speaker referred to community, to Ubuntu, this idea that we are not on our own. We exist for each other, through each other, and because of each other. And so that village that raises a child, we have to create our village. We have to reach out and find our village. With family, with supporters, we have to find those family and those supporters and make ourselves a new family. And if your church is there to be your family, then use that support structure to help really reinforce all of these things because you were made for good. You were made to do good. You were made to be good. So I want to give you some of the wisdom that I found when I was putting together my first book. And the book is called Everyday Heroes. I'll just give you a quick look at the copy. And it's called Everyday Heroes, Learning from the Careers of Successful Black Professionals. And I wrote this book because actually my children, my daughter had come home from school and they were told they were working on a Black History Month project. And to my surprise, and actually my dismay, the project was focusing on, you know, the civil rights in America in the 1950s and Martin Luther King, etc. Now, there's nothing wrong with these people as heroes, but are they our heroes of today? For our children who have to navigate today's challenges? Are they telling our children of today the stories and the lessons they need to understand to be able to deal with the issues that confront them today? I didn't think so. And because I had started Reconnect Africa, and part of that was interviewing professionals, black professionals, Africans and Caribbeans, and saying to them, tell me about your story. I decided I wanted to write a book that would become a resource tool for schools like my daughters, for parents, for guardians, for mentors, to show our young people what our community is already doing because there's not enough recognition. And so Everyday Heroes is a compilation of interviews from 16 different professionals, eight men, eight women. And in this book, I ask everyone the same questions and they're only about seven short questions. So they will answer questions like, I was educated at, my first job was, what I do now is, what I learned along the way is, my greatest influence has been, the best advice I ever received is, and then tips on the particular career that they have chosen. So in this way, I wanted to create a menu of offerings for young people to see at least 16 different things that they could possibly be. And to start using that to think about the skills, the soft skills and the technical skills that you already have but how do you start articulating those skills? And so what I'd like to do is just share a few of the lessons that came out of the question, what's the best bit of advice you've ever received or what tips would you offer? And I hope that this will help as you think about your own journey in terms of your careers and your journey in terms of your internal journeys as well maintaining that self-confidence, remembering that when someone says you can't, you can look at people around you. They don't have to be heroes, they don't have to be famous, but they are doing things. And those are the things that you can look at as role models 
to give you that confidence that you too can do not just as well, but even better than what you're seeing around you. So what were some of these pieces of advice? One of my everyday heroes is an actor called Danny John Jules. He's probably the only famous person with, in the book. Um, he appears on TV shows and so on in this country. And Danny's advice was, you have to be twice as good as you think you are. Now, sometimes you hear the expression, you have to be twice as good as everyone else in order to succeed because you're black, because of this, because of that. But I think Danny puts it better because he says you have to be twice as good as you think you are. And so the only competition is yourself. Have you done all you need to do? Have you prepared as much as you need to prepare? If you're going for interviews to get into college or to get into jobs, have you done your homework? However good and however ready you think you are, there is always more to be done. And the challenge is to think about that and to make that extra leap so that you go from being good to being excellent. And excellence is something no employer is ever going to say no to. And so rather than looking for reasons that may be stopping you getting where you want to go, ask yourself, am I twice as good as I think I am? And if not, what do I need to do to get there? Another of my heroes, uh, Simi Bello, who comes from the lovely country of Nigeria that I'm sure many of you here represent. Simi Bello is um, an inventor. She started life in public relations and marketing, and then she invented a hair product, which is a wig, but it has a little cutout so people can part their hair, natural parting, and cover the edges of the wig. Of the wig. And she invented and patented this wig many years ago. So when I asked her, what words of advice would you have in the interview with her? She said, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. So if there is no such thing as failure and everything that you do, you're either going to succeed in or you're going to learn from, what's there to be afraid of? What's stopping you? So think about that. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. And with that in mind, failure is a concept that doesn't exist. Another of my heroines, Anne-Marie Dixon Barrow, she started life working on a market store. And then she worked, she became, she set up her own business as a recruitment consultant. consultant. She was headhunting senior people for senior roles. And she was eventually even awarded an OBE for her services. I asked Anne-Marie, Tell me what you think is a really good piece of advice. And she said, you are only as good as the last piece of work that you deliver. So think about that. Maybe you've done well and people are saying you're wonderful and you start to get lazy and complacent. But actually, it's the last piece of work that's always going to define you. So you can't afford that. You have to keep working. You have to keep coming back to being twice as good as you are because if that last piece of work is not good, that's the first piece of work somebody is going to be seeing and they're going to think that's how you always operate. And so you can't ride endlessly on one first piece of work. You've got to keep going and keep it up. I asked another of my heroes, a gentleman called Tutu Ajari, who was actually the first black person on the London Stock Exchange, the first black trader on the London Stock Exchange. It was something he wanted to do, and he didn't see anyone who looked like him doing it, but he, didn't, he decided that was not a reason not to do it. And so sometimes you have to be the first, but know that when you start and you open that door, you're opening it for other people to follow. And so you still got to go ahead and be the first. So I asked Mr. Ajari, I said, what's your advice? And he said, have goals in life, but make sure you have fun along the way. And that is so important. The motto of my children's school is John 10, 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So life is about enjoyment as much as striving. It's about balance. And if we think about being healthy, both mentally and physically, we have to find that balance. So enjoy life along the way. 
and don't feel that it's a compromise of one or the other. You can have it all in that respect. And so I would just say to you that when I look at all the lessons from my heroes, when I look at all the advice that they share, one thing becomes very clear to me. And that is that where you start is not where you finish. Because so many of them started in situations that were not the best, but that is not where they are now. Danny John Jules, the actor, started as a bricklayer on a building site. But today, he's earned a very prestigious career as a recognized actor. So where you start is not where you finish. You have what it takes. You have God-given talents that you can nurture, you can grow, you can develop. And I would encourage you to aim high. Think big. Don't make your life small. Don't make your aspirations small. Don't make your dreams small. Think big. If you get even to half of where you want to go and you're thinking really, really big, you will have gone very, very far indeed. And so where you start is not where you finish. Where you finish, my friends, will be down to you. And with that, I thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you today. Only two men taking a chance.